Now that we did set up the HTTP client, let us set up the view which is the main and the only view of this app. By setting up the view, we'll better understand how we are going to use the HTTP client. So what I'll do in here, I'll just return OK so the error is gone. And then I'll just run the app just so I can see what the index view has. So I'll just run the app. So this is the view that we currently have. What we're going to do is we're just going to clean up this view. We're going to clean up the navigation bar and also clean up the footer of this app. Then I'll just go back to Visual Studio. And here go to the Solution Explorer and then go to Home and then index.c-sharp-html. I'm going to clean up all this code. And then here I'm going to add a div. The div is going to have the container class, which is going to make our app or we're going to put our form inside a container. And then here we're going to have another div which has two classes. The first one is going to be the row class. And the second one is going to be the justify and then content and then center. Inside this div, we're going to have another div which has the class called MD6. And this is just to give six columns of the view to this div. And then inside here, we're going to have the form. Now in the form, you always define the method and the method is by default is a post method. But if you want, you can also define it in here as method post. And then you need to also define an action or which is the action in the home controller that is going to handle the request. And if I just go to the home controller, you'll see that we have this HTTP post in here. And this is the action that is going to handle the request. And in here, you can either define a value in the HTTP post or you can use the value from here. If you want, you can just change the name here to open AI GPT, then copy the value, go to index.c-sharp.html, and here I'm going to use at URL dot action, and then the value is going to be the OpenAI GPT. Inside the form, we're going to have three items. The first one is going to be the text area. The second one is going to be the select item. And the third one is going to be the translate button. Let us create the first one. This is going to be a div, which has the class form group. And then inside here, we're going to have a text area. And then here I'll define the class form control. We need to define the name. We're going to also define the ID and also a placeholder for which the name is enter your text. Then next, I'll also define the rows, which is going to be four, and then close the text area. Now the name and the ID values are very important. If you go to the home controller, the value that you want to bind to the text area is the query value. So I'll just copy the query. So whatever value you type in here, it needs to also be the name for the text area. I'll just paste it in here and I'll just paste it in the ID as well. So it's really important to know that you can type anything you want in here, but if you want this value to come from this form, you need to set the name to be query. Next, let's create the other item, which is also a class form group. Inside this div, we're going to have a label. And the label will be, let's say for selected language. So select language is going to be the text. And then here we're going to have a selector. To create a selector, just type select. You define the name. The same way, if you want to bind the value of the selector to the property that we are defining here, which is selected language, then the name needs to be selected language. So I'll just copy that value, paste it in here. Let us also set the ID as selected language. And then in here, I just type the class to be form control. So basically we have the form control on the text area 
we are going to have it in here. And this is a class that comes from Bootstrap just to give like a similar look to all the Bootstrap components. Inside the select, we are going to use the values from the list that we created in here, most used languages, to construct the selector. For that, we need to first pass the value from this controller to the view. And there are multiple ways to pass values between a controller and a view. One of them is by using a view bag. So for that, in the index action result, which is the action that gets called to render the view, and then we have the second action to handle request here on the view, I'm just going to type view bag dot, and here you can put any name you want, but it's important that whatever value you provide in here, you need to use the same value in the index.c sharp HTML. So view bag dot, I'll just use in here languages. You can use anything you want, but it just needs to be the same. The value is going to be the most used languages. Now here we are going to use a for each loop. So for that, I'll just type in here add for each and then var language in view bag dot languages. So it's really important that the value in here is identical to this one in here. And then inside the for each loop, we are going to define the options. So option where the value of the option is going to be at language dot text and the value that the users get to see is going to be language dot text as well. So we have this div, let us put just a break in here for some more spacing. Let's put another break after this one. The last component is going to be the button. And then in the button, we're going to define the type submit. What this does is that since this button is inside the form and it has the type submit, whenever you click this button, this form will be submitted to this action that you have defined in here to be the OpenAI GPT. Let's make this button green by using the class btn and then btn success. This is just a bootstrap class. And then inside here, I'll just type translate. Now in here, if you want to use an icon, you can either create a reference to the bootstrap icons library, or you can just go in here to bootstrap. So get bootstrap.com, then go to icons, search for an icon in here. I'm going to search, let's say for translate this is the icon that i want to use i'll click in here and then here on the right i'll just scroll down and copy the html which is just an svg of this icon so i'll just copy then go back to visual studio and i'll just paste it after translate i'm going to paste that svg value so this is all you need to do and now if i just go to the home controller and then i click the Translate GPT button, so the play button to start the app. We see that we get an error in here, so let's just go back to Visual Studio. In here, I'll just go to the home controller. And I see that the error is in line 44. And that's because you cannot just assign a list and then expect the list to just be bound to the select item on the index.html. And then in here, instead of assigning the list, what I'll do is I'll just type new select list and then pass as a parameter the list of items. I'll just start the app one more time. And you can see that in here now we get the main view at least looks similar to what the final product is going to be. But in here, we still have not updated the navigation bar and the footer. Here we get all the languages. Then I'll just go back to Visual Studio and update the navigation bar and the footer. Then I'll just go to the Solution Explorer and then I'll go to Share, Layout.c Sharp HTML. From here, we are going to remove the items inside here, which is the Home option and also the Privacy one. 
And then here on the translate GPT, we're going to add an image. I have already found an image. So I'll just go to the solution explorer, then go to root folder, which is the folder where you typically put all the static files like CSS, images, etc. I'll name this folder the images. And here I'll just add an image. So I'll just go to open folder in file explorer. I have an image in downloads. I'll just copy this image. I'll go back and paste it in here. You can see that now I have an image and this image will be used just directly after the text. So text in here, which is this translate GPT. I'll add a space, then drag and drop the image in here. So you have the image. And now to this image, let us set a width. Say the width is going to be 25 pixels. And let us set this value as well. Now let us go to the folder so down here. It's going to be just 2023. I'll add my full name, a pipe. I'm going to remove the privacy related stuff. And then I'm going to add the text subscribe to my YouTube channel. The same way in here, we need to have the YouTube icon. So I'll just go to the bootstrap icons. In here, I'm going to search for YouTube. This is the icon that I want to use. Here on the right, I'll copy the SVG, so the HTML, go back to the app. And then I'll just paste it in here. Now, before I run the app one more time, I'll just go to the home controller. I'll put a breakpoint in here because I just want to check if whenever I click the translate button, do I get the values and the selected language or not? So I'll just click the play button here. So you can see that now in here, we have the translate GPT, we have the icon, we have the text in here. So I'll just type in here. This is example. I'll select as a language, let's say French, and then click the translate button. I reached the breakpoint. The selected language is French and the query is, this is an example, which means that the form setup is working as expected. One last change that I'll do in here is that in the layout.c sharp HTML, I'll scroll up and then here on the translate GPT, I'm going to put this value after the image.